Hello guys, welcome to the second part of the ZBrush Crash Course. I am Sunit D. Rosario, and in this lesson we are going to understand the basic usage of the brushes for sculpting. Let's get started. So here we are in ZBrush. In the previous lesson, we learned about how to bring a geometry in the canvas, how to navigate inside the canvas and other basic staffs. So let's bring a sphere over here and then press T to turn on edit or else you can click on this button as well. And then click on make poly mesh 3D so that we are able to start sculpting on this sphere. Now I will snap this sphere in the front view by holding shift and right click. And now let's understand how to use brushes for sculpting. We will try to understand how to use all these options over here on the left hand side. At the top we have the brushes palette which shows what brush you are currently using. If you click on this button then you will be able to see all the different types of brushes which are there. Now there are lots of brushes which you can explore on your own. But frankly, we don't need all these brushes for sculpting. The main brushes which I use are the Move Brush. Then we have these three clay brushes over here. Then there is Dam Standard Brush, and then we have Trim Adaptive and of course Basic Standard Brush. To find these brushes on the palette, we are going to use hotkeys. I am going to show you how to get those brushes quickly later on as we move on to sculpting. Whatever brush you will select, it will show over here. As you can see, standard brush is selected over here, and now you can sculpt with this brush. Next, we have stroke options, which controls how the brush is going to apply on the surface. The default is set to dots, which is for continuous strokes. Then we have drag rect, which is for dragging an alpha onto the surface. Then we have freehand, which is like the normal stroke. Then we have Spray, which gives randomized effects. All these options provide versatile stroke patterns. Then next we have Alphas, which are the grayscale images that determine the texture or detail applied by a brush. These are used to imprint fine details like wrinkles, scales, or patterns onto the surface of the model to add realism and texture variation. Next, we have textures which are used to apply colored images to paint on the model or as reference for sculpting. With these, we can paint directly onto a model or we can use for projection mapping. Then next, we have materials, which contains two different sets of materials. We have matte cap materials and standard materials. Matte cap materials contains pre-rendered lighting and shadow information. Lighting in the scene doesn't affect it, the material always looks the same regardless of ZBrush's light setup. However, if you choose standard material, these materials react to ZBrush's scene lighting and shadows. You can adjust light positions, intensity, and colors. This material will adapt accordingly. These are useful for testing how a model will look in a more realistic or custom lighting environment. Then next we have Gradient, which adds color gradient or shading effects for better visualization. You can choose any color from here by simply changing the position of these points. Then lastly we have Switch Color, which you can use to quickly toggle between two selected colors during painting. Hot key for this is V, you can press V to toggle between two selected colors. Let's move on to how to sculpt. Since this is a beginner's lesson, I am using mouse for now. But I will highly recommend to use a pen tab for sculpting. It will give a much better result than sculpting using a mouse. As you all know by now that we can sculpt by pressing left click and dragging the mouse on the surface of the model. It adds volume to the surface, making the geometry bulge outward. And if you hold Alt and left click drag the mouse, it will subtract volume from the surface, making the geometry indent inward. 
Remember, only left click and drag will bring outside. And by holding alt and left click will push inside. Now at this moment, this is looking very pixelated. That's because of the low poly count or less subdivisions on the sphere. To increase the subdivisions on this object, we have to go over here on the right side and click on this geometry channel. Here you can see the divide button, which refers to increasing the polygon count of a model by subdividing its geometry. If you click on this button, then it will increase the number of subdivisions on the model. Hotkey for this is Ctrl D. As you can see over here, if I press Ctrl D, it increases the subdivisions. Each click multiplies the polygon count by 4. And now if you sculpt on the object, it will give much smoother result. You can use this slider to reduce the subdivisions and if you click on this delete higher button, it will delete all the subdivisions which were there and bring back to the default resolution. Now I will press Ctrl D to add some divisions over here. Let's keep it to 4. Now if you want to reduce the subdivisions without going here and adjusting the slider, you can press Shift D to reduce and go back one level at a time. And now if you want to go forward, you have to press only D key to move forward at a time. So remember, Ctrl D to increase the number of subdivisions, Shift D to move backward, and only D to move forward. But keep in mind, don't go too crazy on increasing the number of subdivisions since it's multiplying four times with each click. If I change the user interface by clicking here, You can see that it's over 2 million points in just 5 subdivisions. More numbers of poly count will definitely give you much better results, but increasing crazy number of subdivisions may result into your computer's RAM and CPU usage spike, potentially leading to crashing your system. Now I will drag this history slider all the way to the beginning to get the default sphere. Let's increase the subdivisions by pressing Ctrl D. I will keep it to 5 for now. Until now, I was using the default brush, which is the basic standard brush, which gives smooth and rounded results. You can hover onto the brush palette and you can see all the details of the brush which is currently in use. Now let's select some other brush. Let's pick Clay Build Up Brush. It gives a rougher, more blocky texture compared to smoother brushes like the standard brush. It allows for quick volume creation and emphasizes a more hand-sculpted look, making it ideal for defining forms, blocking out primary shapes, and layering structure in a sculpt. Now then, let's talk about how to access any brush quickly by using hotkeys, instead of going there and searching for it. Press B to open the brush palette, and then you have to use a combination of the displayed letter shortcuts to select a specific brush. For example, if you want to select clay brush, press C to filter out the brushes that start with the letter C. And finally press L to choose the clay brush. So to select the clay brush, you have to press B, then C, and finally L. Now if you want to select clay tubes, press B to open the brush palette, Press C to filter out the brushes that start with the letter C, and finally press T to choose the clay tubes. So the hot key will be B, C, T for clay tubes. It's very simple guys, you just have to know the names of the brushes that you are going to use. Then press B for brush palette, then the first letter of the name of the brush, like C for clay, and then the corresponding first letter, like B for buildup. Similarly, if you want to select standard brush, press B to open up brush palette, press S to filter out the brushes with letter S, 
Then press T which is the next letter. With a little bit of practice, using hotkeys in ZBrush becomes second nature. They are a great way to speed up your workflow and enhance productivity. Keep exploring and if you have any questions or if you need any tips, don't hesitate to ask me on the comment section. Now then let's select the clay buildup brush by pressing B, C and B. And then I will go back a couple of steps to bring back the sphere. Now comes the strokes. Strokes determine how a brush interacts with the surface of a 3D model. ZBrush provides various stroke types to suit different sculpting tasks. If you select dot stroke, it applies detail as a series of dots along the path of the cursor. Now it's not much visible right now, and you can say that the freehand stroke is not giving much difference. But there is indeed a difference between these two strokes. As I said, dot supplies strokes as a series of dots or stamps along the path of your brush movement. However, freehand stroke produces a smooth, continuous stroke as you drag your brush across the surface. We will get into more details while we move to sculpting. Spray stroke randomly scatters brush imprints in a sprayed pattern within the brush radius as you move the cursor. Now these strokes depends on what alpha is selected. As you can see, this is looking like random square patterns. This is because by default we have square alpha selected over here. If you change the alpha to something else, it will produce different results. All these strokes depend on which alpha is selected. Now suppose you did some patterns over here but the intensity of that pattern is looking too much. To smooth out, you have to hold shift and then left mouse drag on that surface. So remember only left click and drag is to sculpt on the surface. And if you hold shift while sculpting, you can smooth out the surface. Now let's talk about how to change the intensity of the brush and also the size of the brush. Let's select this alpha from here. And as you can see, the intensity of the brush is looking too much. To adjust the intensity of the brush from the beginning, you have to decrease this intensity slider over here. And to adjust the size of the brush, you can use these sliders over here. Now there are hotkeys as well for adjusting these which will be much helpful while sculpting. To adjust the size of the brush, hold S on keyboard and you will get the slider over here, which you can now adjust by left click drag. And to adjust the intensity of the brush, hold U on keyboard, and you will get the intensity slider over here, which you can adjust. It is essential to dedicate time to practice and explore the various brushes and their settings to gain familiarity and mastering their use. Now then let's say you have explored enough and you have changed all these settings and you don't know what the default settings for these were. You can go to brush from here and use left click to scroll up and you will find an option to reset all brushes. Click on this button and you will get back to the default brush. Now if you go to any brushes, you will find all these settings are reset to their default state. That's it for today. Thank you for watching this ZBrush tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and feel inspired to explore this incredible software further. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop a comment below and let me know what topics you'd like to see covered next. Your support and feedback are what drive me to create more content for you. Until next time, happy sculpting.